Presbyterian Church, and we welcome those who are joining us live stream this morning. Uh, they might be joining us from the Osage Church because I forgot to push go live this morning on their worship service. So we welcome you all who are watching us this morning. Uh, for announcements, I want to let you know that we are having a session um, on Tuesday the 20th at 4.30. And Susie, the reason you had the 19th is because I had the 19th in my notes. So that would be for me. Um, also, we are having our Vacation Bible School at the Spring Park from 10 to 12 on Thursday and Friday. Um, Hopefully that goes well and it'll be a good time. And the other announcement is there is a flyer. There was a group of us that met on Thursday uh, this last week. We have decided to go forward with the Ice Cream Social on the 15th of August from noon to 2. And it will be under the shade trees of this lovely lawn. And uh, we're asking the members to bring extra chairs if you have them. We don't want to say to our guests to bring your chair. Um, and so there are, ex those are printed, and I put them on the table where our fellowship snacks are at. So grab them, pass them around. It's on Facebook. And over 900 people have seen it already. So the word is out. Um, it will be a good day on the 15th, I, I hope. I think that's all the announcements I have. For me, I've been attending our General Synod for the United Church of Christ this last week. Technically, it's only been really Friday, Saturday, and today, but I've been in front of my screen from 9 o'clock in the morning until about 7 o'clock at night, so I'm a little dazed and confused because looking at a computer screen, or two, actually, I get a little, <laughs> a little uh, screen tired. So worship will go well, I hope for you, and we will do wonderful things today. So. If there are no other announcements, let us stand and join together in our call to worship to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, as God is our shepherd, we need nothing else. We rest in green pastures and draw by still waters, which renews and refreshes our spirits. God guides us along paths of righteousness. God set the banquet table for us in the presence of our enemies. There we're anointed with oil and our cup overflows. Goodness and mercy shall never depart from us as long as we dwell so let us dwell in the house of God by joining in our opening hymn, which comes from our hymnal 108, Come Christians Join to Sing.
we come and we confess our sin together, for we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And let us pray. Oh God, we live in a diverse community. There are people of different colors and abilities. There are people with different sexual orientations. There are people on the left and the right, young and old, rich and poor. Yet our church does not reflect this diversity. We would love others as you do, but we cannot. We have erected walls built upon our biases, fears, and insecurities that keep us apart. Forgive us that we cannot love as unconditionally as you. Help us to take down those walls so we may welcome the stranger and truly be one community together. Amen. And yes, we know we do fall short in our discipleship, and we have confessed these sins before God and each other. And so we look to God, we repent of our sins, and we end our transgressions, and by God's overflowing steadfast love and mercy, we are forgiven. And for that, we give thanks to God. This is the word of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
and let us pray. Holy and loving Spirit, we find you here this morning with our songs and our liturgy and in the mucks of our family and fellowship. We ask for that spirit that dances within us or with, around us to enter in our hearts and our minds, to open our ears to hear the message you have for us this day. And holy and gracious God, I ask me the words of my mouth and the meditations upon all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So it was about Friday night at 9 o'clock when I actually put this all together because that's about how my schedule went this week. And my head was and is still full of this image of being rooted in love. It seems to me being rooted in love must start at the very beginning. And so I'm going to jog our memory a little bit this morning and take us to the book of Genesis and hear some of what we remember from Genesis 1. We hear how God created the heavens and the earth from a formless void in everything that we have. God looked down upon it and saw that it was good. And then God created mankind in his own image, blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and increase in number, rule over the earth. And God saw that what he had made was good. Actually, he says, very good. And if I can add, and he loved what he has created. And then God rested. And so if we put that piece in there that God loved what he created and what he saw, then from the very beginning of creation, we have been rooted in God's love. And it's only God's because there was no one else there. So when we look at the simplicity of just that, then nothing else and no one else can tell us or take us away from God's love or tell us that it cannot be true. Now, I could probably end right there, send you on your way, because I have a meeting at noon, but there's so much more. I'm glad you laughed at that, Dorothy, because... <laughs> However, there's so much more that we can learn from Psalm 1 and hear about being rooted in God's love because now I'm going to flip it a little bit. Since the beginning, we have been rooted in that love, but we have also taken some liberties of that love. We've torn our creation apart from the heavens and the earth, from the living animals to the earth and the sky and the sea, from mankind created in the image of God, we harm ourselves and our life and our world around us with the pollution and the fracking and the burning of fossil fuels, being overpopulated, cutting down the rainforest, building in places that probably weren't meant to be built on, and so on and so forth. And it has happened since God told mankind to be rulers or stewards of what I created. We have loosely interpreted what that means in our lives. And yes, God still loves us. There's no rhyme or reason to any of that. And yet I feel that he is calling out to us to do better with the groans of the earth, the wildfires that spread, the floods that are occurring. And he's sending us messages that are either we are ignoring, or we don't think are coming from him, or maybe we're just not able to comprehend what he's asking. And yet being rooted in God's love can be an amazing feeling. If we accept God to lead and give, and that we give everything over to him. 
Because why do we think we have to be in control of everything? And that's where Psalm 1 comes into play for us today. This psalm sets the agenda for the identification of the way of righteous and the way of the wicked and their respective fates. And as I look at verse 6, or these six verses, I wonder where we have gone so wrong. I know it's called free will. I get that. However, the Psalms were written after Eve took the bite of that apple. And so God is still teaching us and teaching the people that after free will, you still have to remember I'm here. Verse one from the NRSV reads, Blessed is the man who delights in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. And verse 6 ends with, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And again, looking here, I hear so much about being in God's presence all the time. And when we waver from that or think we can do what we want on our own without him, then I wonder if we stop being rooted in his love completely. It's not that God is saying, I'm done with you, because yes, he still loves us. But when we take our own initiative and we go after it by ourselves, we're separating ourselves. And that's a sin in the book of when we look at separating of sin. There's three different ones. We separate ourselves from God. We separate ourselves from each other. We separate ourselves from, um, from ourselves. Those are the three big sins that we can do in life. <sighs> And so it's not that God's punishing us. We're doing it to ourselves because God does love us. And he will, however, continue to call us back in when we stop following him. He wants us to follow him. He wants us to be in touch. He wants us to have him at the center of our lives. And he might bring that tough love out every once in a while. And maybe people will call us wicked if we forget that he's there. And that's hard to hear and that's hard to understand if we truly do have God at the center because maybe our life's been great. Maybe we've really looked to God and said, everything we do is in honor of you. I have to admit again that that hasn't always been me. And so what I just offered there, this next part might have a little um, sidestep, but I want you to hear a quote that I heard this week that still resonates within me because I think it still has to do with being rooted in God's love. And the quote is, how can God move if the church is silent? And now I'm not talking about these walls being silent. I'm talking about the church, the people being silent. And this quote is in reference in how we, the people, stand up against things that are ruining what God created and still creates. And so how do we, the church, take up a cross and grow the family tree? Eden Presbyterian Church was founded in 1878 and it was officially organized in 1887. It has grown, the family tree. It has been pruned back at times, I'm sure, and it is in a state where growth could start again if we so choose. But how can it happen? It can happen if we find a cause that the congregation really gets behind that we're really passionate about, that God is calling us towards. 
and standing with each other to tell Rudd and the surrounding community that we care about this. And the main thing is that we all kind of need to be on point with it and spread the word. And then we can tell the people how deeply rooted we are with God's love because God is leading us in this direction. And then we can say, we meditate on his word. He leads the way and he blesses us in the ministry that we set are set before us. It's hard stuff, but it's powerful stuff. And I mean, how many times does something happen when God wasn't at the center and that we took the initiative to do it? And how many times did it really turn out okay? Probably okay. But a lot of times, if God's in the middle of it, it would probably would have been a lot better. And then think about the ministries where God was at the center and what a difference it made. It was all rooted in God's love. And when we're rooted in the love of God, we show up because we choose to. We choose to be there because it's a place where we feel loved and accepted as we are. It's a place where people are drawn to that love and just enjoy being around. And so as we move through our week, I challenge us all to really think about how you are personally rooted in God's love. And then I want you to think about how the church can maybe be rooted a little bit more deeply in God's love. Because when we think about those possibilities, and when we become and be the church together, God will bless the fruit of our hands. And he will bless the ministry that comes from it all. Let us give thanks to God. Amen. Our hymn of response comes from our hymnal number 519, It Is Well With My Soul.
We are to pray these words daily. And so taken together, God promises to provide us with what we need to live today. And so we may see tomorrow. Let us be sure to give and honor God our generous gifts from our abundance. Please be sure to put them in the offering tray as you leave that are right by the front doors. And for those of you watching our live stream, we continue to thank you for sending your offerings into Eden Presbyterian Church or even the church that you belong to. Because without your offering, the ministries of our church would not continue. And we give you thanks. Any others? Then let us come to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we do come to you today knowing how deeply we are rooted in your love and know that you will care for us, and yet you still gently remind us that we need to listen. We thank you for being present in our lives, for calling us into being the church. We ask that you be with our loved ones who are not with us this morning, who for some reason may not be able to be with us, whether they're homebound, whether they're um, not able to drive, and so, Lord, we ask that you send your blessing to be upon them, full of grace and mercy, and full of love. Lord, we ask that you be with Dean Horan as he continues to recover from his radiation treatments, and we pray that those treatments did what it was to do. And we pray for his sister-in-law, Judy, and we pray for his sister, Karen. And Lord, we ask that you be with those who are experiencing floodings around not only this area, but across the world. 
but many have lost their, many have died in these floods, and some are still being searched for. Lord, we also pray for the wildfires that are continuing to burn across the western part of the United States. Lord, we pray for this week, we pray for you to be a part of our Vacation Bible School. We welcome you in and ask that you help us bring a joyful message to our children that will be in attendance and for the adults that will be leading and teaching. Lord, we also continue to pray for our men and women of the military and we pray, Lord, that you protect them and guide them Give them the strength to continue to be away from their families as they serve our country. And Lord, when they return, we ask that their families are able to help them integrate back into the community. Give them the time and space maybe needed for them to really comprehend that they're back safely at home. Lord, we also continue to pray for our loved ones in the nursing home and the assisted living homes. And Lord, we pray for our frontline workers as they continue to fight a virus that had a little bit of a ball, but has now been rearing its head again. And so Lord, we ask that you give them patience and courage. And Lord, we also ask that you be with us Help us be mindful of our neighbor and friends. Help us to be more cautious. Lord, we also pray for our nation's leaders and our states and local leaders. And we pray that they see you at the center of all they do so that we're able to lead in a holy way that all will know you and follow. And so, Lord, with those concerns lifted to you, spoken and unspoken, we ask that you continue to be with us in our joys. For those who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries this week, I know you are there and celebrating with them. Lord, we celebrate being with you, and we thank you for all that you continue to do and provide but most of all we celebrate your son jesus christ and we thank you for his presence and we come to you lord with the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us stand and join in our closing hymn at the cross, hymn number 512. <laughs>
And Jesus taught us that when we welcome the stranger, we create a new community where all are one in God. So let us continue the work that Jesus started by welcoming the strangers who come in our path, knowing that God is with us and he protects us as we pursue our ministries of healing and hope. Proclaim God's glory through your work. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.